Hey guys, welcome back to Dueling Destination. So today I have a deck profile from another Dojo Tournament series in Belize. This time it was for a Savage Strike box and I feel like these guys in Belize are just growing crazy with the meta. This time it was won by Yuan Samuels but Bijan, the guy that won it last time, came in second. So you know he's one of the best duelists there in Belize also in rankings. We have Yuan's Prank Kid deck profile today. And that's what I'll be bringing to you guys. So he, I talked to him earlier after the tournament and he was kind enough to send me the deck profile. So I'm actually going to use the picture of his deck profile because like that I feel like I get the personality and the feel that he gets for his deck as he built it. And hopefully you guys like it. And if you do, remember to like, subscribe, and share with your friends. I'm trying to bring different content as I go by, and I hope you guys like it. I have a, another opening of a Yu-Gi-Oh product coming up, and that's from Belize as well. So look out for that one, guys. Let's start off. So he's going to use triple of every prank kid. You guys should know them. They're going to be on the screen. He's using the wind, the earth, the water, and the fire. I'm not too sure how they work. I had them for a while, but I never built the deck. But what's super interesting in this deck that it was only one hand trap that he chose to use, and that was Effect Veiler. He didn't even use Ash Blossoms, even though Ash Blossoms were super relevant. I believe in the meta still, and very accessible. Effect Veiler just came out of nowhere, and I believe that this was one of the stronger cards that you'd want to pick in this whole duel. Well, the whole tournament. This guy, Effect Veiler, would just tear down everything for you on and help him become the champion today. So for the monster lineup, that's what he had over there. And now for the spell lineup, he's going to use triple copies of the Prank Kids field card. I'm not sure the name. I'll probably have the card up on screen. Also, triple copies of Instant Fusion, triple polymerizations, triple Call by the Grave because Prank is, is a combo heavy deck. So, having Call by the Grave to stop your opponent's hand traps when you want to go into your combos is very interesting. And I think a lot of people are going with this. I see some people cutting it down to two, which I really don't agree with. I think triple copies is the way to go. Also, he's playing a spicy card in here, Pot of Desires. Running triple copies of almost every card in his deck. Pot of Desires is a free card for him. It's a draw two. It's just like a pot of greed for him. And I believe this helped him to extend his plays and go into the cards he needed. Also, he's using triple copies of the quick play spell card. I'll have the name on the screen also. I'm not too familiar with all these guys. And he's using triple copies of Prank Kid Pranks. Sorry, double copies of Prank Kid Pranks. One reasoning, one invocation. Invocation is just like a polymerization for him in this whole deck and two terraforming. Also, he's using for trap cards only two copies of Prank Kid Plan. That's pretty good. I mean, the deck is super simple, but it's very effective. Having one first place in Belize with this deck took a lot of skill because I know there's a lot of meta decks now in Belize there were Salaman greats at this tournament there was true Dracos there was Orcas another prank kit deck which I heard made four plays that's for my teammate also now let's get into the extra deck the extra deck you're gonna use triple copies of prank kit rocket triple copies of the doo 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 guy I, I don't know what you call him the chicken looking bird chasing a dog but that's fine and you're gonna use double copies of Bow Wow Double copies of the water fusion monster and one of the butler. And I think he's, yeah, he is using one copy of the link for prank kids. That's not something you use a lot, but it's still okay that you're going to be using it here. And I think that gives you a lot of advantage having a link for that you can go into alongside the burrow lord and burrow sword dragon. So you'd know this guy is a competitive player just looking at his extra deck. The Abyss Dweller is very important right now in the extra deck. Especially with this new format that we're in. All the decks depend on Graveyard. Salaman Graves, Orcas, Burning Abyss still in the format. Prankids depend heavily. So in a mirror match, Abyss Dweller is pretty good. 
So that's for the main and extra deck. Also now for the side deck. The side deck is where it got a bit interesting for me because I did not expect to see this card. But let's start off. He was using triple copies of Prankatops. Prankatops outs the Orcus Azatot combo. One of my favorite combos at the moment. He's using one Raigeki, one Gamma Seal, two Ghost Ogre. Ghost Ogre just came back in the format with a bang. Ghost Ogre fights against Sky Strikers. If you trigger it in the right time, it can hit Pendulums. It can do a lot for you guys. For the back row format as well that we're in, he's using Twin Twisters and Triple Copies of Evenly Match. That's Triple Copies of Twin Twisters, okay guys? But for the spiciness in his deck, he's using Double Copies of Lava Golem. Considering that he's using only one Kaiju, when you're playing against Salamon Grids, they end on two Link Monsters. Before they, when they just started, it was just one Link Monster they would end so that their Rage and Roar would be alive. But now ending in two link monsters for Salamagrid monsters. Well the deck is pretty wise to use the Lava Golem. Lava Golem gets over that just ends their turn basically because you don't leave them with any link monsters on the field. So that's it for the deck profile but you know how we always do it. We always need to ask some questions to the duelists on what they felt about this. So I asked Samuels how was the experience dueling in Belize? And what does he think as it's going and what would he recommend? Also, he gave me his matchups. Let, let's start off with the matchups first. Round 1, he faced off True Draco. Round 2, Orcas. Round 3, Frog Mermaid. Round 4, he was at Salomon Great. And round 5 was the mirror match against Prank Kids. That was on Swiss. Now, Top Cut, he was challenging a Salomon Great player. So, you know... These are all meta decks and great competitors in the format. So you can definitely see that these guys are playing meta now in Belize. They have been very challenging for ev anyone to even win this event. He played also in top 4 a sub-terror deck. I would love to get the sub-terror deck profile. I don't know how sub-terror works really but I would love to get that one. And in the finals he faced off against True Dracos. So, round one in Swiss, two Dracos, and finals, two Dracos. And so, like I was saying, I asked the duelist what he felt. He said, we have great players in Belize. We can still grow as a group, and the learning process is good. Going on this area, I would like to congratulate and give a big shout out to the Dojo Series Tournament. Great job, guys. I love what you've been doing in Belize. Keep it up. And also, in the aspect of using prank kids, he just wanted something diverse and fun to play with. So this guy was just going with his whole heart in diversity, not sticking to only meta players, but also being a bit creative rogue and that won him the whole tournament, which is great. The tournament is a good way for us to develop ourselves and look forward to more. Also, that with this tournament, I believe the Yu-Gi-Oh players in Belize, they get more into the game and that's something I would encourage you guys because last time it was a true Draco that won now it's prank kids I can't wait to see who's gonna win the next tournament so until then guys I'll see you guys next time remember to like subscribe leave a comment down below if you would like me to change anything in deck profiles like this and I'll see you next time guys